Here we're going to look at an induced debt for equity swap. So what we have here is this debt in uh, convertible bonds here, and we want to convert those into common stock or equity of the company. And we're going to look at two methods. The first method here will we'll offer our bondholders a, a extra amount of cash or a premium amount of cash here, so they'll convert their bonds into common stock. And the second method here is where we'll offer the bondholders an extra equity value in the company or more shares of the common stock in exchange for their bonds. But before we do that, we first have to value our debt and equity portion here in those convertible bonds. And we're going to be using the relative or fair value method for doing that. All right, we use this relative fair value method or this proportional method when we have a known amount here of debt and a known amount here of equity on these convertible bonds or this convertible debt in this case. And for our example here, uh, we have the, uh, the known amount of debt is based on a similar bond without the conversion um, feature. And then the equity, the known amount of equity would be the fair value of those conversion rights. So what we're going to do in this example is we're going to uh, come up with the relative percentage that each of those um, um, known amounts uh, represent here. And then when we know that uh, relative percentage, we'll be able to uh, take that times. Uh, in this case, we're going to use the bond par value as our basis. But if the bond sells for a lesser or greater amount, we would substitute that in the equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to proportion here this uh, liability or this debt portion and this equity portion based on this uh, relative percentage here or the proportional method. Okay, let's look at the relative fair value method or the proportional method. So in this case, we have an assigned value here. We have a known value for the debt portion or those uh, convertible bonds in this case. And we also know what the equity value is of the, uh, in this case, the conversion rights. And let's just go down here and look at them. So the known, uh, we've used the similar bond without a uh, conversion feature, and we determined that that bond would be worth $96,150. And then that fair value of the conversion rights, we know that they're worth $2,900. That's their market value here. So let's go up here and figure out how we um, would allocate the, the amounts between the uh, debt portion and the equity portion. So we take these known amounts here, uh, the present value of those bonds here to $96,150 without the conversion rights. And then we take the fair value of those conversion rights at $2,900. Total them, um, we come up with $99,050 here. So to figure out a relative percentage between the um, these known amounts here of the debt and equity. We divide in this case the 96,150 by the 99,050 uh, total amount here to come up with a 97% assigned to the uh, debt portion of those convertible bonds. And then for the uh, equity portion here, those conversion rights, we would divide the 2,900 by the total amount here of 99,050 and we'd come up with 3%. So we got a total here of 100% assigned between the debt and equity portions. So now to uh, assign our uh, equity, our debt and equity portions up here, uh, based on the, in this case, the hundred thousand dollar par value, we would take those relative percentages. In this case, for the uh, liability or the uh, convertible debt here, we take the ninety-seven percent that we assign times the hundred thousand dollar bond par value, and we come up with ninety-seven thousand here. And then for the equity portion, we take that relative percentage of 3% times that uh, bond par value here of 100,000, and we come up with $3,000. So here we allocated the debt portion and the equity portion based on a relative percentage here of these known amounts that we uh, uh, started with here, and we uh, allocated those to these bond par value or what we use whatever the issue price on that bond would be so this is how we use the uh, would calculate the relative fair market value uh, based on the proportion or the proportional uh, method here for allocating this debt and equity portion on this convertible debt and that would be at the issuance of this bond here 
Okay, for the induced conversion recurring a cash premium paid to our bondholders, we would uh, decrease our cash amount or credit it for that additional cash premium that we pay here. And then the bonds payable, we would uh, close that here based on the uh, uh, carrying value of that convertible bond at the uh, conversion date here. And then uh, this surplus account here, that would be closed out because that no longer uh, exists. But then we have to recognize an expense in this case, and that we're debt retirement expense. And that's based on the bonds fair value minus the bonds carrying value at the time of the conversion. So you have to uh, determine the bonds fair value at some point here. And then we would, in this case, debit or increase our expense by that amount. And then the retained earnings here would be the difference between that cash premium that we paid over here and the debt retirement cost. So that difference here in this case would reduce the retained earnings amount by that account. So our balance here in common stock, that was where we converted these bonds into common stock, is really uh, the balance between all the debits and credits here. So you got the debit amounts here and then over here and then you've got one credit amount here on cash. So this, convert, uh, this common stock account would be that balancing amount. Okay, for an induced conversion where we offer our bondholders a greater equity share in the company, or, or that is a greater number of sh common shares for the bonds they hold, uh, first thing we would do here is we'd debit our bonds payable or reduce that by the carrying value of the bonds at the time of the conversion. And then we would also close out this surplus account or this conversion rights account. But we'd have to calculate our expense that it costs us to uh, retire that debt. And we do that here by taking a number of shares times the market price. So we go back to when we originally issued this bond, we were offering them 20 shares per bond, or that equates to 2,000 shares here for the total number of bonds outstanding, times the market price at the time of that issuance. And I had it $50 here, so come up with $100,000. And that was when we issued the bond. Now we look at what it costs us to convert that bond here, and we have to offer them uh, 2,200 shares here, or 200 more shares, and then we take the market price at the time of that conversion, and in this case, we come up with 101,750. So it cost us $1,750 to make that conversion, and that's what we'd um, n um, realize here in our expense account. Now, technically, this debt retirement cost here would be the bond fair value minus its carrying value at the time of that conversion. And I just did a plug here. I'm just saying that that's technically what it is. And that should be the same amount here, 1750 Now, our common stock that we issued here, that, uh, that amount here is really a balance between our debits here and this here would be the credit balance to it. But remember here, when we make this conversion, we have to go back and we have to calculate what we originally would basing, offered our bondholders for the conversion here at that market price. And then um, when we made the conversion, we have to use um, our change here in the values of the uh, shares we offered. Plus, we use the market price at that conversion date to calculate our expense. And then we recognize that here on our income statement.